Hello, this is Trevor Lewis, and this is another video from the Voyager Middle School STEAM Lab. Uh, in this video, we're going to do a, a laser engraved project, and we are going to make a mirror. So I have this mirror here, and it's hard to, you know, just reflecting the screen. But you can see that some of it is a mirror, and some of it has been painted. And I think the screen is making it very blue. But you can see that we've painted different parts of it. And it's kind of an interesting uh, project because it's really hard to see in in video. But when you hold it in your hand, it, it's really interesting because you get all these different reflections. But you're actually getting colors coming through in the parts that we've chosen to engrave. And it's an interesting project because this is a, a one of our only multicolor projects because we actually will do registration with this. Which means that we're going to engrave one part and paint it. And then we're going to have to put it back in the laser to engrave the next part before we paint it. And it's got to line up just perfectly. So it's something that we need to think about as we are designing the object. I just grabbed a design. This is a single color design that a student made. They did Sharpie on white paper. I have traced it. So this is a, um, you can see if I click on it here, I actually have a little fragment there from the scan. But this is, these are um, vectors already. Um, and... What I want to do is I want to get this ready for the laser. So uh, what we're going to do is, because this process is kind of long and involved, what's going to happen is I'm going to engrave the mirrors at the same time. You don't have to worry about size. You can choose either a circular mirror like this one, or you can have a rectangle, um, a square, actually, design. So those are the two that I have in stock. And because you don't know what exact size it is don't worry about the size I will scale it to fit the size so um, if you have a real strong preference about making it smaller than the full size that's something you can express in the SVG by putting in a substitute for the mirror so for example I can just draw a circle here I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna send this to the back by going to the select tool and then choosing send to back and I can resize this while holding control to, to change the size of the mirror compared to the size of my design. And I can select both and I can use my align tools to align them. And you can see because of these things sticking out, it's not going to align quite right. So maybe I'd have to like come in here with the arrow keys and give it, give it a sense. So if you want to make this as a mirror, you can kind of simulate a mirror by just going gray. Um, setting the stroke to none, but it doesn't, it's not going to be shiny like a mirror, but you can kind of get that like light gray effect from the mirror. But because we're doing these all at the same time, so I'll be doing like everybody's mirror at the same time, what I'll do is I'll engrave one, the first color, and then I'll have to paint all the mirrors, then they have to dry, then I engrave all the second color, which means we have to use the same colors. So we're going to use a color palette. So we decided on a color palette. We were going with this one. We are using colorhunt.co to help us find colors. Um, th this is an interesting sort of warmish palette. Um, if I hover over them, you can see I get hex codes here. So that's one way to get my colors into Inkscape. One is I can just read the hex code. So I go 6A, 2C, 70. So if I can remember that, 6A, 2C, 70. If I just draw a shape, and then I go up to fill and stroke. I should get this coming up here. And you can see there's a color here. And it's in hexadecimal just like that. Uh, one of those is the alpha channel. So those last that last FF, if you want it to be full 100%, you just got to leave that FF. Otherwise, you're you're reducing that. But um, I now have, this is where I have to remember that, that hexadecimal code. So it's 6A. Uh, and then I forgot the rest. So I'm going to go back. 6A, 2C, 70. So 6A, 2C, 70. You can see that captures that color exactly. So I can just leave this here as a sample so I don't have to remember that. Or I can uh, eyedropper it in by selecting the object that I want to be purple. Right now this is all still together. So now if I hit the eyedropper and I click on that, it, it takes that color purple, which is also the second way of doing it. So I could match it exactly like that, or I could just take the snipping tool. So I'm going to use snip and sketch here. 
and I can just take a snip and it doesn't even have to be of the whole thing. It could just be of a, a section and then I can go and paste that in, on in and oops, I think I set the fill on that to nothing. Let's set the fill back to something. Eyedropper yellow. Okay. So now the question is, how do I get this to be my different colors? Well, I'm going to have to make some decisions about what colors are what. But if I have a single design like this, there is a way to break this up. And the easiest way to break it up is just go to path and you choose break apart. And it'll break it into all the individual ones. But it's really hard to see what's going on here. So I like to set the fill to none and then set my stroke to some color that shows up pretty well. I'm going to go red. I'm going to hold shift to set my stroke. So now I can see all these things. The reason that it filled all the way in here is because this void here was not aware of this shape. So it just filled those both in yellow and not aware of this shape. Those three shapes kind of have to go together because they're the negative space of that outer circle. So if I just grab those three shapes and I combine them again, now when I set, I can just do D on the keyboard to get my dropper. If I set that to purple, you can see that's the part that was set purple. And now I can set my, my stroke to, to none just to preview this. And then as I keep going here, maybe I want to make these planets a different color. So um, they're all still separate. So I can hold shift to select multiples carefully like that and then go to path and choose combine and that will make those holes again and then I'll hit D on the keyboard and click there to fill them in and um, I can also hold shift to set the stroke it might be a good idea right now to start setting the stroke to a thin version of that same color because when I export my DXF in order for me to know which ones are which color I'm going to be looking at those stroke colors because that's the only thing that saves in the DXF. So maybe now these these ground objects here I want to do orange. So if I want to select more than one thing at a time by drawing a box around it, you want to make sure you'll notice that if I touch an object, if I touch an object, it won't necessarily select. See this outside is not necessarily selected, but whatever I I encapsulate will be. And I can hold shift with this technique as well to add to it. But you'll notice that I'm starting outside. That's because if I click on this gray circle and I drag on it, I'm just going to move the gray circle. So those are all selected. So I'm going to combine those. It's control K on the keyboard. It's control shift K to break apart. I'm going to hit D on the keyboard to switch. I'm going to make these ones orange. And I'm going to set the stroke to orange while I'm at it. And you can see that there's a couple of little flaws here, like maybe these other little bits here that are attached, I would want to separate out and change their color. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But let's first, let's, let's do this yellow business here for these dots in the background. So I'm going to go like this to get all those dots, but you can see I accidentally got some other things that I didn't mean to get. So I'm going to hold shift and unselect those. And it's also revealing that there's a few things in here that maybe I don't want. Um, and I'm having a hard time unselecting them because they're underneath this other object. So let's see, is there, there's a way of doing that, isn't there? Maybe not while I have multiple things selected. Well, maybe I will set the, the fill of all of those to yellow and then I'll come back and address these other ones in here by changing some, some layer, um, orientation. So I'm going to go yellow. Oops. I'll go back and set that to purple in a moment. And I'll shift click yellow to set the stroke to yellow too. And then let's go back to this other bit here. So there's some there's some extra bits in here that I'm not able to select because they're underneath. So I'm going to send this all the way to the back. And then I'm going to send the gray to the back behind it. So that way when I click here, I can find those pieces that I had missed on that first go around. And I can combine those by doing Control K. And I think there was, was there one in here? Yeah, there's one. So I'm going to select those and do Control K. 
And then I'm going to do D on the keyboard, set my fill and my stroke by holding shift. So now I've got, oops, now I've got my colors set. And if I want to come in here and say, look, this doesn't look right purple. It should be orange, really. How do I separate this from the rest? Well, you and I can tell that this should be connected, but Inkscape doesn't know that. So the way you can force that is you can draw a very thin piece here that's going that you're going to delete. It needs to be enclosed, so make sure you hit the end at the end. My stroke is set very large, so you can't really tell that that is what I want to get rid of. But if I set my fill and then unset my stroke, you can see that's the part I want to get rid of. So uh, if I go back to select, hold shift to select both, go to path and choose difference. Did that not work? One more time. Did I do that wrong? Path difference. Oh, maybe it's a little too small. I don't usually have that problem. Let's try that one more time. Path difference. There we go. Got it to cut. So you can adjust these little handles here. You can come in and delete some of these nodes. But if you want to separate off that one piece from the bigger piece, you're going to have to do the control shift K to break it apart and then unselect that one if you can. Let's, oh, I know. I'm sorry. Let's set my fill to none here. That's my big problem because then I can click the edge. And then I will control K that. And I will set my fill again by using my eyedropper. There we go. And then I can come in here and say, okay, that one that I've now separated out here, I want that one to be orange. So dropper. And then shift click with the dropper. So that, you can see that can be a little tedious, but um, that gets us going here. This is the SVG I would save. And once I've saved this SVG to, to export it for the DXF, you're gonna need to get rid of some of these things that you're using as design elements. So you just have the thing that you want to engrave and you've got the stroke set to all those different colors. So that's all good, but I'm going to reverse this horizontally because I'm engraving this on the back of the mirror. And if I set my fill to none, then you should be able to see the different colors. You should be able to have the yellows, the pinks, the purples, and the oranges. Um, and those are the ones I will engrave and then paint those colors inside those lines. So this is ready to save as a DXF. So turn in both of those files and we'll engrave it on your mirror for you.